Some say they can taste it. Our passion for tradition and dedication for producing high quality products is undeniable. O'Galley Cheese is located in beautiful Pepin County, Wisconsin, a location chosen by Swiss immigrant Leo Buman in 1945 as he knew the climate and land quality were perfect for producing superb milk, the starting point for making award-winning cheeses. Today, O'Galley Cheese produces primarily Parmesan, Asiago, and Romano cheeses, and we still use traditional methods to produce wheels because of their superior flavor, body, and texture characteristics. It all starts with the milk, and we have been sourcing our milk from local family farms since the very beginning. Milk is picked up from our farms by farm bulk trucks. The milk is inspected by the milk hauler for temperature and quality at the farm. He measures and records the weight and then pumps the milk onto his truck. The milk arrives at the plant. Today we process 630,000 pounds of milk per day and produce approximately 12 million pounds of cheese annually. It is tested to verify there are no antibiotics present. The temperature and pH are checked to ensure quality. The milk is pumped into a storage silo until being used for making cheese. The milk is pumped from the silo into a balance tank and is run through a milk separator. This removes some of the fat from the milk, allowing us to achieve the proper fat to protein ratio needed for our cheese type. It then flows through a pasteurizer where it is heated to 162 degrees Fahrenheit and held in holding tubes for 15 seconds, killing off unwanted bacteria. The milk finally arrives at the cheese vat. The cheese maker will test the milk for the proper fat and protein levels and make adjustments as needed. Starter culture is added to the vats. It has two main functions. First, it converts lactose in the milk into lactic acid. This lowers the pH of the milk, assisting the next steps of the cheese make process and aids in producing a safe product. The other key function of starter culture is producing the desired flavor and texture characteristics in the cheese as it ages. Different types of cultures and enzymes are used dependent upon the cheese being produced. When the vat is full of milk, the cheese maker measures and adds rennet to the vat. The rennet, in addition to the acidification created by the culture added earlier in the process, will coagulate the milk, turning it into one large gel mass. The cheese maker tests this mass until just the right consistency is achieved. Next, the knives in the cheese vat are put into motion. This starts to cut the large mass into smaller pieces. With each pass of the knives, whey is removed from the mass and smaller curd-sized particles start to form. Now that the curds have been formed, the next step in the process is to cook the curds in whey. This is done over a set period of time to allow the curds to shrink and remove the proper amount of whey. After the cook cycle, the cheese maker pumps the mixture into a tower where the whey is separated from the curds. Long perforated tubes in the tower trap the curd and allow the whey to filter out. The small curds begin sticking together, forming a long cylinder of cheese. A portion of the cheese is cut from the cylinder and drops into a cheese form. The form passes through a metal detector and a lid is placed on top of the cheese. Using pneumatic cylinders, the cheese is pushed into a carousel press. The cheese will be pressed under high pressure and vacuum. This extracts whey out of the formation and forces the small curds into a tighter pattern. At the end of the cycle, the cheese is pushed from the carousel and onto a conveyor. This conveyor carries a form to a lid remover. The form is inverted, 
and the cheese is blown from the form using cleaned air. An operator then places an acidification ring around the cheese and places the cheese on a cart. This ring keeps the cheese in the shape of a wheel. The cheese is kept warm allowing the cultures to continue to work, converting lactose into lactic acid and lowering the cheese pH. The cheese maker will turn the cheese several times throughout this process. This helps to remove whey that forms on top of the cheese and keeps the cheese flat and consistent on both sides until cooled. When the cheese reaches a desired pH, it is placed into the brine tanks. The cheese is stood on edge where it will stay for seven days. During this time, salt is absorbed into the cheese while more whey is removed. Salt brine is sprayed over the top of the cheese to ensure all sides of the cheese are covered. Salt is a key component in cheese. Not only does it add flavor, it also acts as a preservative and aids in the body development during the aging process. The cheese is removed from the tanks. It is conveyed out of the flume and loaded onto a drying rack where it will sit overnight. The next morning, the cheese is placed onto drying racks and moved into the curing cell. In this area, the humidity and temperature is precisely controlled. The cheese will sit in this room for five weeks until the moisture on the cheese meets spec. The cheese needs to be hand turned several times during this period so that the rind of the cheese is dried in a consistent manner. After the moisture spec is met, the cheese is removed from the curing cell and packaged. The wheels are now sealed and placed on a pallet. The pallet is weighed and a label is placed in the pallet containing the information required by the customer. The cheese is now ready to be aged and will be shipped out in a few days. Parmesan needs to be aged for 10 months to meet the legal standard of identity. This cheese will not be enjoyed for many months, but we have plenty of aged Parmesan in our retail store in addition to many other items including our handmade curds we produce in our trial vat. Thank you for supporting our dairy farmers during this June Dairy Month. I hope you've enjoyed this virtual tour. If you have any questions or would like to learn more, stop in our cheese store. We love to talk cheese.